Let's turn back to the Labour conference now because it it was marred um, by those rowdy scenes outside on Saturday, just a few hours ahead of the keynote address by the Labour Party leader and the Thornishta, Eamon Gilmore. There were a thousand people there. A handful of them broke through the Garla barrier in opposition to a variety of different things. Aon O'Reardon is a, a TD for the Labour Party in Dublin. Aon, were you aware of all this going on outside? And thanks for having me on. Uh, I was, and uh, I actually was was walking from uh, from the from the foyer into into the hall when 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 the barrier w- w- was breached, and I and I, and I saw the uh, uh, people pushing past Gardaí and, and and confronting Gardaí and all the rest. Now it was a very small element of the of the protest. There was there was a, a large number of people who didn't come anywhere near the campus who, who listened to the Gardaí who had their protest. And to be honest, I think it's it's quite healthy in a democracy that people are are, are willing to. To engage in in political uh, protesting and to to have their voices heard, to you know engage in discussion. And to be honest, uh, if anybody wanted to meet me or any of the Labour Party TD on any of the issues that they were trying to raise, or yes, they were always willing to do it. That's why we have constituency offices. That's where we where we meet interest groups all the time. And uh, that's probably a more constructive way to do it. There were a number of people who were who were quite scared for a short period of time because. The Labour Party is a, is, is, is a big organisation and people from all age groups come to the conference. Some more elderly members would really look forward to it. They enjoy the, the camaraderie, the, the, the talk about the old times, particularly actually this conference because we were talking about the 100 years of the Labour Party and the mm. sort of So there was a number of elderly people who, when you know when, when they saw the scenes outside, were actually quite uh, quite frightened for and for how, a period of time. how would you categorise these guys figure. who were who were pushing their way through the guard of the Barry, who were trying to effectively break into what is the conference? Sorry, say again. How would you categorise them? Well, I think it was it was quite thuggish behaviour. Uh, to, to be honest, the Gardaí have a have a day of work to do. Um, Gardaí were were around the conference. Um, I, I think it's perfectly reasonable to engage with the Gardaí when you're going to have a, a march or a protest or, or or to make your 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 opinion known, and that's fair enough. But I mean, there comes a stage where um, you you work with the Gardaí and and the Gardaí will work with you. What you don't do is you break by, past uh, barriers, uh, push and shove, uh, be confrontational, be violent. I mean, to be honest, I I once had great sympathy for uh, parties like the Socialist Workers Party uh, a long time ago in my in my student years. And actually, uh, in 2001, I went for the group, not a member myself, but a, a group uh, of that party to uh, draft the death campaign in March in in Genoa, Genoa in in 2001. Well, on another, on another day, you're saying you'd have been out there with them. Well, I was with them at, at that protest, but that protest in Genoa in 2001 made me realise very, very quickly that this group have no interest in actually uh, finding solutions. What they want to have is a row and a protest. And protesting is all very well, but you get into politics to find solutions. And that's why a year after uh, my experience in Genoa, I joined the Labour Party because I wanted to be part of a party that would get into government and and find solutions to the to the problems that the country has. So, you know, protest is all very well, but violent protest is absolutely bang out of line. Mm. It needs to be condemned. And I think anybody who is in a, is in an elected uh, position has to has to stand up and 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 defend rightful uh, democratic protest, but has to condemn a violent confrontation. Well, let's bring in uh, Richard Boyd Barrett to Newstalk Lunchtime. He's a TD for the People Before Profit Alliance. Um, uh, Richard, were you there on Saturday? I was indeed. And did you see this this small group at the front of this protest uh, tackling the Gardaí and trying to break into the convention centre? No, I didn't. And uh, to be honest, I think the characterisation of it is, is, is not accurate. I mean, just first of all, to clarify, and this is something that's been confirmed in a lot of the newspapers today, there were 5,000 protesters uh, marched through Galway. Um, and approximately 1,000 of those, it wasn't a small group, approximately 1,000 of them uh, marched further uh, through security barriers to the entrance of uh, the Labour Party conference. Uh, and it was a very diverse, large group, which included many pensioners, pregnant women, people with uh, prams and buggies and so on. Now, I wasn't there when they marched through the barrier. I was back, further back down the demonstration. Mm. But I did go over afterwards and to describe uh, that group, which is a very large group, as being violent is simply just not No, but there was, a, there was a number of people at the front and we saw the TV pictures. I mean, they are presumably the group that Aon O'Reardon is referring to as being a little thuggish. Well, 
if the photographs I saw showed middle-aged uh, people, including farmers from Donegal, elderly women at the front going through the barriers. It didn't show a Turkish element from what I could see. And when I did go over the bridge to where this very large crowd uh, had assembled in front of the conference center. It was very big, very diverse, uh, groups from all over the country, all ages uh, and so on, um, men and women, children. And they weren't threatening in any sense to storm uh, the venue. But how, but how how did Gardaí end up on the ground? Because that was one of the most striking photographs that I saw was a member of Angarda Shia Khan on the ground being surrounded by what looked from the photograph to be angry and distressed people. I, I think that the the... the the, the, the group of approximately a thousand who marched, they did go through, the, they pushed through the security barriers. Um, uh, certainly they did that, from what I can see. I, I wasn't there at that particular moment, but that's the report I heard afterwards, and I think some people fell over. Uh, although I understand, I think it was somewhat sensationalised what happened. Uh, people pushed through the barrier, and then when they got to the conference entrance, they stopped there. There was no attempt to storm the building or anything like it. I think the group that went through, which as I want to stress was a large group, yeah. uh, uh, simply wanted to be seen by the Labour Party delegates, seen and heard. And, and, so and there was no thuggish behaviour. There was no no aggression, no violence. These were these were people who were you're talking about farmers and people with prams. Were they the ones at the front? They, they were. They were. Uh, can um, I? Just, they, I, I, they, I tell you, you weren't there, and I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Aon O'Riordan was there. Aon, would that have been your understanding? Well, Aon, you know, Aon was inside. Was inside the building. Well, let's just ask him. Was well, that your I, I understanding? I was at the at the window when, as I said, they're already going from the foyer into, into the into the conference hall, and I saw the barrier being breached. And they weren't. It wasn't being breached uh, by women with prams. It was being breached with people. I have a photograph right in front of me on screen, uh, who were pushing past Gardaí, who were being aggressive, who were being thuggish. And one of them, I witnessed myself, had a Socialist Workers Party flag as he tried to uh, and succeeded to push past Gardaí, who are public servants. Uh, doing a day's work, and to be honest, if if I, and I believe uh, Richard, you're a member of the so- Socialist Workers Party. If you're not, they they certainly have a link on your website. You have a link on, on your website to the Socialist Workers Party. If if I saw somebody behaving in that manner with a Labour Party banner, I condemn them immediately, and I would describe them as thuggish. Well, uh, first of all, I am a member of the Socialist Workers Party, who are part of uh, the United Left Alliance. Um, uh, but the uh, I, what I saw. When I went over the bridge uh, to where this uh, group had assembled was a very, very diverse group uh, with lots of um, elderly people, banners from all over the country from the campaign against uh, household and water charges. And nothing that I saw would indicate uh, a group that was being aggressive. I do understand there were some scuffles as people went through the barrier. Uh, I didn't see that, but uh, but they weren't supposed to be going through the barrier. That's the whole point. They were trying to force their way through. Yeah, I think they wa- they want they wanted to get closer to the conference uh, to so they could be seen and heard by the delegates because the main assembly point was out in a square, which was well away from the conference. And I can understand why they wanted to get close. And once they did get close, there seemed to be no problem because when I went over, the guards looked very relaxed. Uh, indeed, I talked to a couple of the guards at one stage, and they all looked very very relaxed to me. Is that uh, why th- is, is that why they used the pepper spray? They were so relaxed. Well, I wasn't there for that part, but I presume the pepper spray was used when people went through that barrier. Uh, And frankly, there was nothing I saw after people went through the barrier that would indicate there was any particular need for people to be worried. It had had calmed down sufficiently. But can I put a point to you, if I can, Richard Boyd Barrett, of the thousand people that were there, the the farmers and the woman with the buggy and, and, and all the other people who were there with legitimate gripes about what the government is doing, that a lot of what they did became completely and utterly ruined by a small group at the front of that that completely dominated the headlines and detracted from whatever legitimate argument was there from that peaceful protest. I, I, I think that that issue is being overstated. That's the point I'm making. But I should you not I mean, condemn it? You're, not, you're, you're doing them a disservice by not condemning it. Well, I, I didn't see what happened, so I certainly won't condemn something that I didn't uh, see. What I did see is... Uh, that the group that went through that security barrier assembled uh, for about an hour after that outside the conference entrance and were doing nothing that w- one would describe as violent or threatening. They were simply chanting slogans but wanted to be seen by the uh, delegates uh, and then dispersed peacefully after about an hour. 
uh, standing outside the conference entrance. And I don't see any particular uh, problem with that. And I, I think the, uh, the the real story is, if you like, that 5,000 people went to Galway from all over the country in a very large uh, a determined and angry protest, but, but an overwhelmingly peaceful protest, to uh, challenge the Labour Party over the fact that uh, it is involved in inflicting brutal austerity and cuts on working people and vulnerable sectors of our society, such that we had the shocking report last week that t- nearly three quarters of a million people in this country are living in poverty well, and that that poverty has got worse. We'll, be, we'll be touching on that a la- little bit later on with a different survey from the Credit Union, but Aon are on the numbers in that particular protest group have potential to to swell further now with this latest water charge and water meter charge. What's your understanding yeah, I, I, of as I, what's gone on I with that water, water charge? In one, one sec, but I, I really am I'm really taken aback by this Arsene Wenger approach that the Richard Boy Brown has to what happened uh, on Saturday. I what do you mean I, by Arsene Wenger approach now to non footballing fans? As in, I didn't see it. I didn't see the incident. I'm not sure if it was a penalty. I mean, I'm actually looking at the at the at the Socialist Workers Party um, website right now, and it says reality: the only tugs on show in Galway were using pepper spray and wearing uniforms. So effectively what the Socialist Worker Party, which Richard confirms them he's a member of, uh, are calling Gardaí thugs. Now, I'm quite happy to discuss any of the issues that were raised uh, by the protesters, the vast bulk of whom were peace- peaceful and have an absolute democratic right to protest. But what I won't stand over is a TD, a member of the Olerin, being associated with a group who breached to a Garda barrier and then on their website tog- called those Gardaí Thugs. Did you call Gardaí thugs on your website, Richard Boyd Barrett, or someone no, in your I party? Haven't, I, I haven't seen the references uh, that... Uh, well, he didn't see the incident on Saturday, and then, you know, I'm not aware of what's on the, the social uh, yeah. workers' party. Yeah, but it says here in front of me, the only people, yeah. on, the only thugs on show in Galway were using pepper spray and wearing uniforms. Uh, are, you, are you not, ta- are you not taking his word for that, Richard? Uh, no, I take his word for it, uh, and I presume Do you agree with that? I, I, well, I certainly, I certainly think the use of uh, the Guardian were talks on Saturday. No, well, it's certainly that I didn't. I, I wouldn't have described so it that we, way. We, we, will you condemn the the the, the, the action? Uh, no, I, am, I won't be. I won't be. I won't be badgered into condemning anything until uh, I've you, seen you it and hear the explanation. But, but you don't condemn because the confrontation well, with Guardian or calling them talks. No, what I, what I what I do think was unnecessary and excessive from what I saw of the protest was the use of pepper spray. I think it was unnecessary. Well, because I don't, I, don't think, I don't think there was anything that justified in terms of the crowd that were there, the makeup of that crowd, uh, pensioners, farmers, they all weren't the ones who were breaking people, through the barriers. Can, 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 can I just intervene here for a second, gentlemen? It's a very simple question. If it's on your party's website, Richard Boyd Barrett, that an allegation is made that Gardaí are thugs, do you condemn that if it is there? I'm not saying that you have to confirm it is there, but if it is there, that is something you should condemn. No, I, I, well, what I would, what, what I do condemn was the use of pepper spray. I think it was excessive and unnecessary. So you're, you're questioning if a guard that was standing there and felt the need to use pepper spray, which is obviously what happened. That you're saying that uh, that, that the guard, they are thugs. That's what you're saying. No, I'm not. I, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, and in fact. Uh, it, the, I, uh, the guards seemed very, very relaxed when I walked over the bridge from the, the rally that was taking place in the square to the group that had gone through the barrier. The guards looked very relaxed uh, and the protesters were entirely peaceful and were chanting slogans. Uh, and I didn't, see, I didn't see anything, Aon, I didn't see anything that, to my mind, would justify uh, the use of pepper spray or terms like violent or thuggish. Please, the difference between you and me, Richard, is that you know we're inside that hall trying to uh, do our best to get this country back on track, including things like the Crow Park Agreement, which defends the pay structure of Gardaí, public servants who are going through a tough time. And we're holding on to that agreement as much as we can, but people in your party breach through them, push past them, get aggressive with them, and then on their website call them thugs. That's the difference between uh, I, what I, we're I doing think, and what you're doing. I, I, um, I think the reality is that you were, in a, you were in a conference where you were justifying brutal cuts to vulnerable sectors of our society. No, I'm, uh, no, I'm actually, and I'm, are I'm standing over. In a, standing in a, in a dem- over. I'm actually involved in a democratic party which is trying to find a way out of the mess we find ourselves in yeah. and trying to have a conversation about it. Now, I'm quite happy I to think have the a question, conversation the with any, the, on, the uh, any the interest group on any of the, of, the, of the issues that we had. We had people from Barnardos there on Saturday, which we were talking to, people from, uh, from, um, from Young Bally Mun, 
there is any amount of interest groups who are talking about the, the, the you know the serious issues that we have in our in our country. I have spoken about the about the, the issues of unemployment and, and the social stress that it has on, on the communities that I represent. I have no difficulty in talking to any of the interest groups who have a problem with what's happening and government policy that is totally justifiable and understandable in a, de- in, a, in a democratic society. It is not good enough to push the boundaries of democracy into anarchy and to tuggery and then to accuse those who are trying to facilitate a democratic uh, uh, conference, uh, uh, the Gardaí, of calling them thugs. That's bang out of line. Uh, Aon, I think the question that you should be asking yourself is why 5,000 people from Donegal, from Waterford, from all areas of Dublin, from Limerick, from Leitrim, from Carlow, from West Meath... I've already addressed that issue. 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 Okay, we can't hear both of you if you're both speaking at the same time. Yeah, you've had your chance now, Aon. Well, I've already addressed the point that you've made. Well, the problem is the Labour Party is not addressing the concerns of those people and the very many more who are angered at the austerity that you're imposing, the unju- the injustice of the household okay. charge, and uh, now plans to introduce water charges uh, you, to further punish and you made, You've made that point, Richard. People. Aon, can I just ask you, on the water charge issue, there has been some significant confusion over this. Can you cast mm. any light on it? Because the Taoiseach one day is saying that people will have to pay for it, then the next day he says the Thornish was right when, no, when he said no decisions were made. What is your understanding about these water meters? Are people going to be hit for the actual meters themselves? I, th- I think a level of clarification has to come into this. I know that there's a, there's a, a cabinet meeting on, on uh, tomorrow. I think after that cabinet, uh, cabinet meeting the situation is coming off that clearer. I think this is the problem with weekend interviews sometimes that um, when, it, when it do- these things don't happen in the doll, don't happen in the Iraqis, when there isn't a level of, uh, of if you like, the Taoiseach speaking to the doll, and then, of course, opposition members uh, having speaking clarification, it's, it's much easier for us to, to, to have a handle on, on what the plan is. I have, I have no difficulty with water charges. I have no difficulty with a, with a proper uh, uh, property tax. I think the issue, though, is there's a balance between if you were to present to people you know, a fully functioning, uh, reliable water uh, service, particularly in Dublin, in my own constituency, where there's been huge problems with water pressure and loss of water services at the winter time, that if the if the infrastructure and the financing of that could could uh, could boister that infrastructure to such a degree that there would never be a problem with the water supply again, and you have a a, a generous um, if you like uh, amount that would be obviously would be free for usage in in families and households, you know I think most people would accept that. But it, it's how it's handled, and I think we've learned a lot from the way that the household charge issue was handled. That you have to give people a vision of what the the, the water charge is, is there for, and the type of water service that we should have. Uh, in the future uh, and, 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 and show up a totality of that package rather than just... Yeah, so there, there, is no clar- there is no clarity at the moment, the, that's what you're saying. There wouldn't, you know, I, I accept that there's, there's confusion and, and I'm hoping that that confusion will be, will be uh, clarified tomorrow after the Cabinet meeting. Richard Boy Barrett, final word to you on this. Is this the kind of thing that's going to anger your supporters even further? Well, it's not about my supporters. I think it's the, it's huge numbers of people. I mean, we had over a million people refusing to register or pay the household charge because of it, its injustice before the deadline date set by the government. And if they think there was a, a rebellion on that issue, wait till you see the rebellion uh, there would be on the attempt to make people pay for something as basic and as necessary for human existence as water and to privatise it, uh, which the reports uh, seem to indicate, to set up a private company to turn water into a commodity. And it's simply extraordinary, it's even more extraordinary that the Labour Party would be uh, supporting such measures when the real issue in this country is not about the need for water meters to charge people for water but is about the fact that we're losing between 30 and 50% of the water through a decrepit water infrastructure uh, that needs uh, huge uh, repair and rejuvenation and which indeed could provide massive employment for people Uh, that's how to conserve water is to fix our decrepit water infrastructure uh, and invest in that and the idea that uh, people will now only have access to water if they can afford to pay for it is simply shocking in the extreme and then that is it will be sold off to a private company I mean it really indicates the depths to which the Labour Party has sunk that it would be presiding over that sort of policy Richard Boybar thank you very much for that Aon Arirthan before we finish up with you there is one question that is linked to the earlier conversation about the use of pepper spray at that event Um, it's from Kate on Twitter Um, ask Aon Arirthan if he condones the use of pepper spray on protesting citizens in a democracy. We did ask Richard Boyd Barrett a question along those lines. What's your answer to that question? I support the 
Gardaí, if the Gardaí have to have to resort to certain measures, I've no difficulty with that. I don't think Gardaí walk around to peaceful protesters and and and, and pepper spray them. I, I I know what that happened in that circumstance was that somebody being aggressive, somebody uh, breaching a barrier. Uh, the Gardaí intervened in the way that they saw fit and I have no difficulty with that. All right, we'll leave it there. Aon O'Rear on Labour Party TD for Dublin and uh, Richard Boyd Barrett at TD for the People Before Profit Alliance also from Dublin. Thank you both very much for that.